Hi guys, welcome to a video. It's a, it's a day in autumn, hence my autumnal get up, which actually happens all year round. Ghastly chic. I look like a malnourished yeti. My hair is so long. Anyway, I finally read a book which I have been wanting to read for absolute years. I don't know why it's taken me so long to read it. I am of course talking about the 1872 novel Carmilla. It's absolutely the perfect time of year to be reading gothic vampire novels from the crypt. Obviously what sparked my interest in this book, despite being a literature grad, is the web series. I'm gonna make a separate video comparing the book to the web series, so I won't talk too much about the Carmilla web series here. I'm just gonna talk about the book. It is one of the earliest, if not the first, vampire novels. I don't want to say it was the first because perhaps it's not, but it was definitely, it was before Dracula, like it was one of the original daddy vampire books. And it's essentially about a young girl who lives in this remote castle with her father, Madame Peridon, and Mademoiselle de La Fontaine. She's pretty lonely in this big castle, she's quite isolated, she's supposed to have this young female companion come to join her but this initial female companion mysteriously gets ill and passes away and so under a full moon one night a carriage pulls by near the castle and the carriage has an accident and out gets a well-to-do lady who says to this young girl's father can you look after my daughter because I need to be somewhere and I feel like she's not gonna you know recover for this journey and I've, I've got to bounce by the way don't ask questions and she's fine. If, if she doesn't appear fine, just ignore it because she's fine. So Laura's father takes this girl in and her name is Carmilla. And the book focuses on the relationship between Laura and Carmilla. Eventually, Laura starts getting a bit out of sorts and a bit sickly and strange things keep happening. And eventually it all comes to a head and it's discovered that Carmilla is in fact a vampire. And spoiler alert, yes, it was written in a 1872 but I'm, I'm going to be talking about the ending of the book so if you haven't read it maybe click off and come back. Anyway a series of events happen which end up in them killing Carmilla in a pretty brutal way while she's in her coffin. Bathing in blood which is a lush bath bomb I believe. Now I didn't think the book was as offensive as people say that it is. Of course, there are a lot of undertones in this book that are almost linking homosexuality with disease and viewing it in a way that it's something that can be spread from person to person. And given the real life history of discrimination and prejudice against gay women and LGBT people in general, but I'll just use gay women because that's what the book focuses on. Of course, the book could be seen as very toxic and poisonous in that regard. However, not once when I was reading the book did I really stumble across anything that offended me or made me think I don't like what I'm reading here. Of course, it's written by a man, so all the women are written through a male lens. The majority of the women in this are pretty and delicate and slim and, you know, I have to also say I don't think the book is particularly well written. The tale is told very succinctly, there's not much detail necessarily. The book is almost simple. However, I'd just like to add on to that, I loved the book and I devoured it in two days just because it was written succinctly and not in great detail and I don't think the author's a particularly great writer. I think he's a good storyteller because I was sat there sipping my tea, I couldn't put the book down. I could not put this book down and I read it in two days. It could pro I could have probably read it in a day but I had to sleep. I really did adore the book despite its potential for offensiveness. I actually really did enjoy this book. Another thing I'd like to point out about the book is with books written from that era, especially in regards to things like homosexuality, you wouldn't expect that kind of subject to be very overt. That is sort of a misconception because there's a lot of literature from even earlier than that which is quite explicitly erotic and homosexual. It's always shown in like a depraved light. I mean it's not positive but it's still there. So it wasn't a forbidden subject, it just wasn't shown in a positive light which again is reiterated with this novel. But I just have to say the 
lesbianism was overt in this book, like to the point where it shocked, I was scandalised, and to the point where it shocked me just because I wasn't expecting it. I thought, oh, there'll be a little glance here and there. No, Carmilla is fully like making these advances and, I mean, she's not making out with Laura, but she's kissing her and she's saying incredibly romantic things and they have high romance. In fact, I would categorise this book as romance. And the other thing I'd like to point out, which kind of challenges the perhaps like offensive homophobia of the book. Whilst they do obviously kill their lesbian antagonist, like they, they do kill Carmilla, the book ends with Laura still thinking of Carmilla and not in an unfavourable light. I think the way the book ends is drearily romantic. I, I actually, it's not a happy ending, but it's not like Laura, our helpless heroine, is just like, oh, thank God she's gone and thank God she's dead. And she's actually still thinking of her in this quite romantic light and, and daydreaming. Almost like Carmilla has left an impression on her soul. Obviously you guys will definitely have your own opinions on the book, the book can be read and taken in so many ways but I yeah I actually didn't think the ending was as atrocious as it was gonna be. It is of course a horror novel as well so you know that's to be taken into account and yeah I was very keen to let you guys know what I thought of the book. Perhaps you guys will feel differently. If you've read the book don't forget to let me know what you think in the comments. Maybe you agree with me, maybe you disagree with me. I'd love to hear your opinions. Don't forget to subscribe for instant disappointment and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!